next up is a small uh, demonstration of how this uh, what this looks like in practice and for that we're going to use a process it's an account payable department uh, it's the handling of received invoices we're going to use the snapshot of one year of data and the data set contains 14 unique ac activities like receiving an invoice paying an invoice and we're going to have a look at the process from the perspective of the three different stakeholders so it's either a team lead payment an internal audit member and the bpo the business process owner for this accounts payable process and each of them has different questions different challenges that they would like to have resolved uh, in order to do that we're going to make use of our generic process mining application, also called application one. So like I mentioned, we have the three stakeholders and let's see what their uh, challenges are. So first up is Eric. Eric is a team lead for uh, the payments team and his goal is to increase efficiency. Uh, the challenge that Eric has is that he has a high number of new hires in his team and they recently made some changes to the IT system. He has a feeling that not all of the steps are being executed correctly and that some, maybe new people, are deviating from the agreed process. At this point, that's the only thing that Eric has. He has a feeling, but he would like to investigate and find any factual uh, evidence if this is really happening. So let's take a look how process mining can help Eric in solving this issue, uh, this challenge. So what you're seeing now on the screen is our standard application one um, overview. And it consists of a number of menus and different dashboards. But we're gonna start with showing you the power of process mining. And that's gonna start with the process graph. So I'm now going to use a favorite to easily switch to our process graph. And what we're showing here is actually what we call the happy path. So uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. So the happy path is usually the very most, it's the most common way that the process is executed. And it doesn't cover all cases because as we will be showing a little bit in a little bit, is that there's a lot of deviations even for this simple process. So by using the sliders at the bottom, we can start to add more and more activities to this process. And as you can see, by adding more process, more activities to the process, the process changes and it becomes more complex. And this, for instance, this overview would be an overview that for instance, a, a specialist within the process would be able to tell you as well. But as we will show, there's more exceptions than only this. So by using the activity slider, we slowly add more and more activities to the process. And the way that this is changing is what we call uh, the Tracy algorithm. And it tries to keep the process as stable as possible. So that's easy for an analyst or for you to interpret what's actually changing within the process. So we can also start adding edges. Edges are transactions uh, between the different uh, activities. And by slowly adding these, Eric can see that what's changing within the process. So if we then move the sliders all the way to full, and this one as well, we get a complete overview of how the process is run with all its exceptions and weird uh, deviations. And you can immediately see that this is already quite more complex than the standard situation and um, there's one thing that's immediately standing out in this case and let me show let's triggered eric it's like a process invoice that immediately goes to a repeat payment process while no payment has been done before so what we can do is we can select uh, select this one approve it zooming in on the actual run of the process and then by switching it 
we see that it's for the general advisor supplier, but we can also change to the case owner. And now we can see that the one who was responsible for this case, where the real thing happened, was Match Patel. So this way, Eric found out that Match Patel has been executing the process in a, a slightly uh, deviant way. And this is just one of the ways that Eric can use process mining to find deviant behavior and investigate further if there's any real things happening. 